Hello, and this is Nathan. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. We are going to be doing something awesome. This is the teardown of the Brava Jet M6. I can't wait to get this guy open and see how it works. So with any teardown, it's good to disconnect the power just in case there's any high voltages. I know this is a low voltage application, but it doesn't hurt just to remove the battery. Okay, so the nameplate on this battery is a 1775 milliamp hours at 19 watt hours. This is a typical lithium ion battery, which a lot of electronics these days use. Now, the benefit of using a lithium ion battery is they're smaller and lightweight and have a higher discharge rate than a standard nickel cadmium battery or dry cell battery. So that's why these batteries look really small, but they can run these products for hours on end. Okay, time to get my wrist to work out. I got 24 screws I gotta remove so I can get the top cover off. As a young Nathan and a rumbunctious little kid, I used to take apart all my electronic toys from my power wheels to my dad's stereo. Basically everything I can get my hands on, I would take it apart. So I blame my parents for giving me a screwdriver when I was six years old because I literally took everything apart. I remember one time I took my dad's stereo apart. It was one of those old fashioned wheel to wheels and he was not too happy because at the time he spent four thousand dollars on his day and it was one day in the living room all torn apart and just basically was unable to put it back together so here's another story i have for you guys so when i was 10 years old i was hanging out with some friends and they always had cool toys like go-karts motorcycles something that my parents were never a strong believer in they thought they were too dangerous kind of like trampolines oh you're gonna break your neck Whatever, I was a kid, I wanted all the cool toys that my friends had. And only being 10 years old, I didn't have any money, so I decided to build my own go-kart out of wood. I needed a power source, like electric motors or a gas engine, so I decided it would be smart to take apart my dad's wheelchair. Yes, my dad's a quadriplegic, been a quadriplegic for about 30 years now. So, one night when he was asleep, I snuck in his room and took apart the two motors from his chair and mounted it on my cool go-kart. Well, the very next morning, I was grounded for three weeks, and I'd never hear the end of it. I always sometimes hear my parents say, Okay, stay away from your dad's wheelchair now. Okay, let's keep on going. So I just removed this plastic part. This houses the bopping pad very easy. It just is held on by five screws. So you may notice this unique little device right here, which I highlighted. This is actually the sensor to recognize what mopping pad you have installed. The M6 offers a wet mopping and a dry mopping pad. All you have to do is insert the pad and the robot will automatically recognize what pad you have. So if you guys watch my channel, remember those cracks? I got a replacement wheel set and those replacements had cracks as well. Well, apparently these wheels are supposed to have grooves and cracks in them. So a few of you from YouTube land commented that using distilled water helps reduce the streaking of, from the tires. I did try it and it does help a little bit, but I will definitely upload a video of a distilled water test for my mopping robots. I'll probably try different brands as well. Oh man, I think my wrist has a six pack now. Oh, this is tough. I should have brought my electric screwdriver. Oh well, that's what happens when you try to film at 1 a.m. and everyone else is asleep and you're trying to do a cool teardown video. Luckily, I have some spilled coffee from my last mopping video, so I was able to save that coffee. Yes, no coffee was wasted. I went ahead and drank it. Just kidding. I did not drink that coffee from my last video. Okay, let's see if I got all the screws undone. It looks like, oh, nope, never mind. I missed a few. So let's keep on talking. What should we talk about? I wonder how you guys just stay are. Do you guys enjoy these videos? I know you guys like watching a crazy person on YouTube, but I enjoy doing these videos for you. You guys are an awesome audience. Um, I'm almost at 400 subscribers, and I just want to personally thank each and everyone that has subscribed to my channel. This has been a real fun experience, and I continue doing this. I do enjoy doing this. You might notice my enthusiasm, and I try to do a lot of different styles of videos, funny videos, sad videos, unboxings, crazy videos, you name it. I try to make my channel very unique from the others. If there's any type of video or testing you'd like to see, please let me know down in the comments. I do have a couple other robots on order. I was recommended by one person to get the Roomba E5. I also have an LG Cord R9 on the way. Hopefully it gets here sometime this year from China. So, how does this 
Roomba M6 work? Is it ran by a bunch of Skittles? Let's find out. Oh, there's where all my Skittles went. I was wondering where the Skittles were leaving. I was going to blame my three-year-old daughter, but nope. The M6 loves Skittles. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so, yes, I put the Skittles in beforehand. Uh, the M6 did not eat up my Skittles, but it was just something to keep you guys awake on. Okay, let's keep on going. So, notice all those wires? Yes, these wires go to different motors and sensors. There's four cliff sensors, three actual motors. There's two that drive the wheels, and then there's one that drives the pump. Also, did you know that the inside of the M6 is kind of waterproof? Yes, all the sensors and... The module that houses the electronics are in an enclosed waterproof casing. Okay, so I'm going to have to have a talk with this M6. It's not allowed to eat up all my Skittles. So, bad M6. Don't ever do that again. Hmm, where should I begin? This looks like a very interesting setup. There's no plug and play modules here. It looks like it's all kind of soldered in here. So, in the top right corner, you got your water pump. And then you got your left and right wheels, which have a little spring that help it navigate over uneven terrain. Keep in mind that this robot cannot go over thresholds, even like 0.2 inches. It does struggle on those. So in the bottom left hand corner is the battery housing module, helps keep the battery firmly in place. And in the top right is the water pump motor. This motor can be found in any cheap motorized toy. Okay, let's go ahead and take apart the right motor module. I have always been fascinated with gearboxes. It's so cool how they can change the RPM and torque of a motor and determine what direction, speed, and torque they like. That's the whole point of a gearbox. So if you want to see the most complex gearbox system I've ever seen, take apart the Radio Shack Armatron. It's a basically a toy grade robot arm. It literally has the most complex gearbox assembly I've ever seen. Okay. Here's where iRobot's quality stands out. Look at that. See that white ring around it? That is actually a gasket to keep dirt and the grease inside. This really shows that iRobot cares about the longevity of its gearboxes. And the one thing that breaks gearboxes is dirt that gets in between the gears and ultimately strips out the gears. You may notice the slant in the gears. This is called a helical gear. This provides additional torque and power to the drivetrain instead of a spur gear. So it looks like iRobot did a pretty good engineering job keeping everything waterproof. Also, they did a good job laying the wires down. There's little tracks to keep the wires from moving around. Very nice job on iRobot's part. So here's the counterweight for the battery. Helps keep the robot even in weight distribution. Okay, we got the famous banana plug. What is this? Hmm, what's under this crazy little plug? Oh, okay, so this is a little module that helps wick away moisture. And here's the 3.0 vision camera system. Kind of looks like your typical cell phone camera. So, here's one of the four cliff sensors. You may notice that it's encased. Well, that means it helps keep the water away from the sensor module. We also have a spray nozzle up top there. And then off to the left is the distance sensor to help slow the robot when it approaches an object and this big bumpy rubbery thing is the physical eject button to remove the pad so if you ever have a clock it's pretty easy to replace the hoses just takes a standard surgical hose so underneath this rubber gasket is where all the electronics are that control the robot so this part has a lot of universal left and right parts so they can actually route the wires to the left or right if they choose now here's where the physical button switches are. You notice that black stuff that helps keep the water out. And we got the physical lid switch that helps tell the robot if the lid's open or not. And this is the water sensor. So the robot is capable of determining if the bin is full of water or not. So if you like these types of teardowns, please smash the like button. Helps me gauge if this video is popular or not. I do plan on tearing down more of my robots and thanks for watching and please subscribe if you're new to my channel because I do a lot of crazy robot videos.